In your blender scene, if you have a glass material, or some sophisticated metal or plastic material, it might look good in the material view. But, if you render, it looks very dark, almost black. This happens only because of the poor lighting in our scene. We can fix it temporarily, in the viewport, by enabling the HDRI environment that comes by default with Blender. But if we render this scene, it still renders as very dark, without the HDRI background, because it is just for the viewport only, not for the actual output. In this tutorial, we will learn what is HDRI, and how to set up an HDRI environment for our render output. HDRI stands for High Dynamic Range Imaging. An HDRI image is usually a 360-degree high-resolution photo that covers a broad spectrum of light information, including both the shadows and the lighted parts. Normal cameras or even the display devices are not capable of handling such a broad range, they either capture the highlighted parts like the sky or the clouds, and the shadows become very dark, otherwise the shadows are captured well, but the highlighted parts get whitewashed. In an HDRI image, this entire spectrum is retained in a single photograph. You can search over the internet for 360-degree HDRI pictures and use them as your scene background. Another good option to download free high-quality HDRI files is HDRIHaven.com, where you can get lots of high-resolution quality files, they are completely free. Blender itself comes with some default HDRI files. If you go to the installation folder of Blender, you will see these three subfolders. Under Data Files, then under Studio Lights, and then under World, you have multiple such HDRI files. We have copied one such HDRI file, called Forest, to our desktop. Now, let us go back to Blender. If you want to use this HDRI file as the world environment, go to the World tab. Click on this yellow icon beside the color, and select the Environment Texture option. Then, click on Open, go to the location where you have saved the HDRI file, and open it. Now you will see the HDRI picture in the background of our scene. Also, the objects are getting very good and vivid lighting. Let us now render this frame. We can see the render output, with the HDRI background and a HDRI lighting for our objects. This looks very realistic and attractive, which is an advantage of HDRI. Now, if you want, you can keep the HDRI lighting, but hide this HDRI background from the scene, so that the objects are visible much more clearly, without any distraction. There are two different ways to do that. First, go to the Render Properties and scroll down. Expand the Film section and under this, enable this transparent option. That will create a transparent background for our scene, but the HDRI lighting will stay as it is for our objects. Let us now render this frame again. As expected, we get a transparent background, with HDRI lighting for our objects. Now the second method. If you do not like this transparent background, if you wish to have the default gray color, or some other color in the background, it is also possible. Let us first disable this transparent option. We have to now edit the node setup for the world background, so that the environment takes a fixed color in the render, but the HDRI lighting is used for the objects. Let us open the shader editor for that. Now, change this drop down to world. We have the nodes for the forest HDR that we have already set up. First select this background node, and press Shift D on your keyboard to duplicate it. Then go to the add menu, and add a mix shader. Place it after the background node and before the world output. Connect the HDR background node to the top socket, and this standalone background node to the bottom part. Again go to the Add menu, and add a node called, Light Path. Connect the camera ray output to the FAC input of the mix shader. So, when the camera ray is on, that is for the actual render and for any view purpose, Blender will use this fixed color background, but the HDR background will be used for the environment lighting. Now, back to our viewport, we can see the gray color in our background exactly as we wanted. And to change this particular color, just expand the second color node and select any other color of your choice. You can use this simple technique to light your scene with far better color and get a realistic output. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.